Here's a problem about permutations, a type of problem where the order of certain objects matters to the solution of the problem. So the problem is you have six horses and six stalls. How many possible arrangements can there be? So how many ways can you organize the six horses into the six stalls? Before we actually get started with this problem, let's think about some ways that we could tackle it. So one strategy that we might try to use is to make the problem easier. For example, instead of trying to find all the possible arrangements for six horses and six stalls, let's start out with a fewer number of horses and a fewer number of stalls. Next, we should probably organize the data in a table and that's going to help us with our third problem solving tip and that would be for us to look for patterns so here we have a, a way to start thinking about this problem by making it a little bit easier let's just say that we have one horse and we have one stall and it's obvious we only have one possible arrangement of placing that horse into a stall and that's not very interesting so let's make there, let's add one more horse and one more stall. So here we have two horses. Let's have this horse be known as horse A and this one be known as horse B. So one possible arrangement is horse A is in the first stall, horse B is in the second stall. But another possible arrangement would be to have the two horses switch spots. So now we have horse B in the first stall and horse A in the second stall. Once again, not entirely complicated. Um, so let's start getting to that point of six horses, six stalls. You could see where we had two um, arrangements. Another strategy that I suggested that we use to uh, help us determine the answer was to make a table and start looking for some patterns. So let's start filling out our table. In the first problem we had um, where we only had one horse and then there was one possible arrangement. Um, in the horses. Now let's look at what it would be like if we had three horses. So back to this slide here, now I know that I have six possible arrangements when I have three different horses and three stalls. So back to this slide, I have four horses and 24 possible arrangements. Now I want to start looking for patterns here in my table. Now one of the things I can do is I can look for patterns across the table. So 1 times 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1, 1 minus 0 is 1, but that pattern does not continue for let's say 3. 3 times 1 is not 6, 3 divided by 1 is not 6, 3 plus 0, 3 minus 0 is not 6. So I need to start looking for patterns in other ways. So actually, I'm going to start looking for patterns that go that way. So one of the things I'm noticing is that 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. So that would lead me to believe that the next one is going to be 24 times 5. 24 times 5. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 20 is 120 plus, uh, excuse me, 100 plus 2 tens more is 120. And that pattern will continue this way too. So times 6, 120 times 6 is 720. Now that's how, that's the answer to our original problem. There are 720 possible arrangements. So now we have horse A in the first stall, horse B in the second stall, and horse C in the third stall. I'm going to keep A in the first stall 
but I'm going to switch B and C. Since there are no other possible arrangements with A in the first stall, I'm going to move B to the first stall, put A in the second stall, and keep C in the third stall. B stays in the first stall, but the positions of A and C, or C and A, switch. It was quickly, uh, I was quickly running out of room there with adding pictures, so I'm just going to go back and, once again, use a table to help me organize the positions of all of these horses in their stalls. So I first started out with horse A in the first stall, and then B, and then C. If I keep A in the first stall, all I need to do is switch the positions of B and C. B goes into the first stall. I'll put A in the second stall, leave C in the third stall. Keep B in the first stall, and then switch the positions of A and C. And then finally, C gets to be in the first stall, with A in the second stall, and B there. C stays in uh, that position. And we just arrange those. And one of the things I'm noticing is that for every horse, they get to be in the first stall two times. Let me come back to that when we look at adding a fourth horse. Um, but so far right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to add those that number to my possible arrangements. So now I'm going to add a fourth horse here and a fourth stall. So I'm going to have A, B, C, and D. And I'm going to keep A in the first position. I'm actually going to keep B in the same position, and I'm just going to switch around C and D come back to A. B has been in that position two times. There's no other way for me to switch C and D, so I'm going to put C here. I'm going to put B in this position and D in the fourth position. I'm going to keep A in the first position, keep C in the same second position, but now I'm going to switch D and B. Now I'm, I think I've run out of ways for me to have C in the second position, so I need to add D into that second position. I'll put B in the third position and C in the fourth. A is going to stay the same, D is going to also stay the same, but I'm going to switch the positions of C and B. Now I've given everybody a chance to be in the second position two times. So I've run out of possible combination or possible arrangements for um, A in the first position and having four different horses. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six possible arrangements. But that's only with A in the first position. I still have B, C, and D in the first position. And each time I do this, the same pattern is going to happen. There will be six different ways for B in the first position, six different ways for C in the first position, and six different ways for D in the first position. So really what I end up having is six different ways for each of the four horses. So I have 24 possible arrangements.